Hello again, welcome to the serious painting analysis by your local experts. Today we will be looking at a notable, iconic, popular painting by Edward Monk, uh, The Scream. The Scream was uh, painted in uh, somewhere around 1893, since uh, there are several, several renditions of it uh, by Edward Monk himself. Um, he did them um, with temperas, uh, with pastels, crayons, he even did a lithograph of it. Lithograph, lithograph. Lithograph. This is the iconic painting, everybody recognizes it. Uh, there is an, even an emoji of this painting, so you can't miss it. Uh, the painting was painted in uh, late 19th century, as said. Uh, a lot of people connected uh, speculate that this might depict the skies as they were after the Krakatoa eruption, which happened in 1883. Uh, some speculate that's not the case. Um, scholars have also identified which fjord this is. This is in Oslo, Norway, and supposedly this uh, depicts a scream of nature, uh, in words of Edward Monk himself. Uh, some connected to um, the feelings and emotion he was going through as his sister was uh, committed to an asylum. Uh, something this may, you know, indicate something else. There, are, there is a lot of speculation what this actually depicts, uh, but one can be for certain this is pure terror. What I like about this painting is this face uh, is simultaneously an alien also a skull but also it's painted as if an absolute five-year-old kid had painted it, it, it or drawn it absolutely with... terrified yeah or or it looks like he just remembered he forgot something at home <laughs> oh, fuck, i left the stove on <laughs> you, you know what, it, what know. now that i'm looking at it it reminds me of a light bulb <laughs> 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 Maybe he had a terrifying idea. Was he bold? Because that's supposed to be him, right? No, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. Even though if this depicts him, Edward Monk actually wasn't bald. He looked just like a normal guy. This is his self-portrait, so he was just a regular guy. A regular 19th century person. Hmm. So... Uh, Let's continue the analysis. Some scholars speculate that uh, this painting originates, or maybe we should say the idea for this painting and this position of hands originates from Edward Monk's visit to a museum where he saw a mummy uh, in this same position. Supposedly this was a mummy that was uh, exhibited in Paris uh, at an exposition universelle in 1889. Um, some also speculate that uh, there was another mummy in Florence that uh, Monk could have seen, but this was proved to be uh, impossible since he first painted the picture and then saw this mummy. What's interesting is uh, this painting came in uh, a lot of different versions, so this isn't the only painting of uh, the Scream. The Scream uh, came in a simpler version and more complicated ones, as you can see here. What's also interesting is uh, this painting has been stolen a couple of times. Uh, notable two thefts happened in 1994 and 2004 uh, and always the people, the thieves were caught. The painting was recovered later and uh, what's interesting is uh, it hasn't been damaged much, especially not as much as they expected. So um, this terrifying picture actually survived the test of time, more than a hundred years old and being stolen and traveling through, I'm guessing, a lot of different hands who didn't handle them uh, the painting correctly and yet it survives and yet it's still safe. It's incredible. The fun thing about this painting is that it's featured in uh, popular culture everywhere. You know, it, they say it influenced the Scream mask, you know, the horror movie, uh, also the silence from Doctor Who. Uh, the Home Alone. Yeah, the Home Alone, uh, the uh, Kevin McAllister. Kevin's pose. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Kevin's pose. Um, but I, I, th I think the emoji one wins. This is probably mm. the most interesting trivia about it. I, I don't know if there, there's any other painting that has its own emoji. Not to my knowledge. <laughs> I mean, I didn't even know that the Scream had its emoji until we 
started researching it. Yeah, you know, I, I always saw it, but I never made the connection. The thing mm. is, you see it, you know it, but you never think, oh, oh yeah, that's it. You know, there was one di different thing. I remember years ago uh, when I first learned about the, the hairspray Schwarzkopf and I was always thinking, oh yeah, okay, the trademark Schwarzkopf, whatever. And then after years on, when I learned the German language, I realized it means black head, which is the logo. Schwarzkopf is just saying black head. You know, it's one of these things that you don't realize you understand until somebody points it out. Yeah, okay. You know, the same goes with Blaupunkt, you know. Mm -hmm. People usually think, oh, Blaupunkt, okay, you know, radios and stuff. But then, then you realize Blaupunkt, okay, it means blue dot, mm -hmm. really? <laughs> um, anyway, one really interesting and funny thing is that this painting was an inspiration for the U.S. Department of Energy. Uh, for a non-language specific symbol of danger in order to warn future human civilizations of the presence of radioactive waste. <laughs> Are you serious? Does this tell you that radioactive waste is going on? I mean... I, I have no idea what any future <laughs> generation would think if they stumbled upon this you know, this image. You know, they, <laughs> tackled, they, they tackled this issue uh, in the documentary Onkalo, where in Finland they have this underground reserve for nuclear waste, and they tackled the problem. How do you warn future humans who might not look like us, who might not speak the same language or understand the same things that we do, that how would you leave them a message that something is wrong here, you don't want to go there, you know, something is deadly. What do you leave? You can't just, you know, say, mm -hmm. r write something. Maybe they won't speak the language. So usually, you know, crossbones and skull tells something. But looking at this, this looks like a Humpty Dumpty egg with <laughs> with stands here. This doesn't look like like hands. This just looks like somebody having a laugh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> this is hilarious. I mean, seriously. Use the Department of Security, excuse me, of Energy. Do something about this. This isn't good. <laughs> really, this isn't good. I hope you guys didn't pay anything for this. <laughs> okay, on to, this will be a long one. On to uh, our grades. So, uh, aesthetics, quickly. Do you like this painting aesthetically, visibly pleasing? Mm, yes, it's terrifying, but it, it, it's a cool painting. I like it. I love it. I love this painting. Uh, you know, I love it that you can put it on the fridge and everybody would think that, oh, your, your child did it. Oh, it's nice. <laughs> you know, it's made in such a fashion, but the message is so strong. And this is, this is why, although it was really easy to paint this picture and uh, painting and anybody could paint and, or draw this, uh, it, it's so important and so strong because it, it conveys a message so firmly and so clearly that I, I can't even imagine what people must have felt, uh, you know, uh, in the late 19th century when they first saw this. Uh, in terms of aesthetics, uh, I think um, since it's disturbing but also pleasing, maybe we should uh, go with 5 out of 10. I'd give it a higher score, like I'd give it a 7. Okay, uh, let's meet in the middle and give it a 6 out of 10 for aesthetics. Okay. Regarding colors, uh, this painting does use nearly all the colors, uh, although they are pastel. So this means it has this, uh, you know, it's always a dark photo, a dark painting, excuse me. Um, in terms of colors, uh, I think it deserves a 6 out of 10. I agree. The watchability factor on this painting is huge. Mm -hmm. uh, I would, I think it easily deserves a 9 out of 10. Yeah, for me also. However, I'm not sure whether I want it in my living room. Not me. <laughs> it's too disturbing. Yeah, I want it in my kitchen, on the fridge. No, 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 on the no. fridge under a magnet. <laughs> so living room has factor, it, it, it turns a 1. But it has a 10 on our kitchen, kitchen has factor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go with that. In terms of size, this painting is a medium size. It's uh, nearly one min meter in height, 91 centimeters, and 73 wide. So on our scale for size, gives gets a four, gets a four out of ten. And finally, the price. Uh, the scream is an expensive painting, although it's uh, been made in several versions, and uh, there are many different ones. Uh, 
and there are probably trillions of copies of it, the original is expensive. It's uh, around $119 million, probably more. So um, it easily give, gets uh, a 9 out of 10 for our um, price category. Okay, and uh, that wraps it up for today's episode um, of the Serious Painting Analysis by your local experts. See you in the next episode.